Hey, welcome back to our channel. We're in the Rockies. On our channel, we want to help you make the most of your vacations to the American West. So in this video, we're going to talk about accessibility at Yellowstone. This is a topic that we've received a few requests and comments on our channel. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a big deal to us. We, my wife and I, we both work with people with disabilities. So I'm going to talk about Yellowstone, maybe try to answer some questions that you might have about getting around and what you can do and what you can't do at Yellowstone. You know, in my opinion, the national parks are really laid out in layers. There's kind of just a beginning, the most basic layer is just the ability to drive around and see some amazing things. Just about all the national parks have their roads designed to where you can really get a lot of enjoyment just by driving through them. And that's kind of the most basic layer. And then there's kind of a second layer where you can get out and see some of the main sites. They're usually pretty close to the road. Not You don't need to be hiking great distances to get to them. And then there's kind of a third layer for, for people who are a little more hardcore, who want to get off the beaten path, get away from the crowds, and see some incredible things. So I think you can really enjoy the national parks just about any stage that you're in. In this video, I'm going to cover... Um, some information mostly obtained from Yellowstone's Accessibility Guide, which is on their webpage, and I'll give you the highlights of that. And then at the end, I want to give you my opinion on the places that you should see depending on your level of ability, okay? Uh, now I have in the description a bunch of links. I have a link to the guide, the Accessibility Guide, and I also have a link to a map of Yellowstone. It looks like this. And on the map, it has some codes down here that may help you out a little bit. And so I would encourage you, if you're, if you're going there and this video helps you plan it, print that map off and take some notes as I'm, as I'm going over some of these things, okay? So the first thing is the access pass. You're probably aware of this already, but if you have a disability, you can get an access pass. This is like the National Parks Pass, like a yearly pass, but it's actually a lifetime pass, I believe. And it's for people with disabilities. It's free. You can obtain this pass at Yellowstone, at the Yellowstone entry, or you can obtain it ahead of time at or uh, online. There's a $10 processing charge if you do it online. I have also put a link in the description to the places that you can obtain this pass. So basically any national park, but there's a bunch of different places that you can obtain this pass. So there might be one near you that you can obtain it without having to pay the $10 processing fee online. To get it, you have to prove your disability. So this could be something like a statement from a physician, a document issued by a federal agency such as the VA or Social Security Disability. Um, or issued by a state agency like Voc Rehab. I don't think a handicap pass works. I think you need something more than just a handicap uh, parking sticker, okay? Another thing to note is download the official Yellowstone app for your phone or iPad or something like that. Uh, they have on there a list of all the sites to see at Yellowstone, and if you click on it, you can scroll down and there will be a little section there on accessibility. So each site has a little accessibility option that you can kind of see, hey, does this look like something we're going to be able to go visit or not? This is laid out in much more detail in the accessibility guide, which is a 36-page document that I've linked to in the description. And then also on the Yellowstone app, you can click on the map and then click on the little filter button in the top right corner. And then you can click accessibility or wheelchair. Those are two options there that you can click on there. And it'll show you everything that has, you know, accessibility options or that has wheelchair accessibility there for you. So check out that app. That can help you plan your trip for sure. Okay, most, now one thing I want to emphasize about Yellowstone is that I believe it's really an accessible park, a very accessible park. So. If you're kind of concerned about what you're going to be able to see or do because of your limitations, I don't think you need to be concerned. It's incredibly well laid out to the vast majority of the people that go to Yellowstone see it pretty much 
from the car and from very close to the main road. So there are just a ton of things that you can do still if you have limitations. So like most services have accessibility options um, like gas stations for example have call buttons that uh, you can click on for somebody to come and help you out. There are three medical clinics in the park. Um, there, all the restrooms are accessible except for at West Thumb I believe. But there's a Grant Village nearby that has, has restrooms that are accessible. Uh, the showers at the campgrounds, most of them I believe are accessible. So it, it's really a, a very friendly park, I believe, for people who have limitations. Wheelchairs. Let's talk about wheelchairs for a minute. Uh, I mentioned that it's a uh, accessible park. Wheelchair, Yellowstone is a very wheelchair friendly place because many of the things that you're going to see are the geyser basins that have boardwalks. I mean, these are, these are quite easy to push somebody around in a wheelchair or if you have a motorized wheelchair, they're really pretty nice for the most part. I'll, I'll tell you a couple that aren't, but uh, for the most part, that's something that you can do. Also, you, if you need to, you can get wheelchairs, you can get wheelchair loans from most of the visitor centers including uh, Old Faithful and I think this would be a, probably a very good idea to do at Old Faithful or at the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. You can get a, a loan from the visitor centers there that will help you see more of that those areas. There's a lot to see in those areas so that'd be a good idea. And then you can rent a wheelchair at all three of the medical clinics. So if you needed to rent one for other places in the park that you're going, um, you can do that as well. That's an option. If you need audio, like if you need sign language interpreters, these are available for the ranger programs with three weeks notice. And I'll put some information in the, in the description. All this is in the Yellowstone Accessibility Guide, so they have a phone number to call if you need, or if you would like an interpreter for a ranger program. That might help you enjoy your trip much more to get that lined up ahead of time. Uh, visual, they have also some visual, if you have uh, blindness or visual impairment, uh, you can get a braille edition of the park newspaper at the visitor centers. You can get the official park map and guide in braille. Or large print, if you need large print, they have those for you as well. You can also get audio descriptions of the large print version. So uh, again, check into those options if you if you need that. Let's talk about service animals real quick. Yellowstone allows you, the, the only service animals they allow are dogs that perform a function, uh, more of a physical function I guess. So basically like a guide dog or something like that. But they don't allow comfort animals. They don't allow the dog if they're just a comfort animal or, or any other comfort animal. The dogs, if you have one, if you have a guide dog or something like that, it must be leashed. And then if you're going off the path a bit, like into the backcountry, you need to get permits, so check on that as well. Okay, now let me give you my opinions on what you can do kind of based on the level that you're at. So if you're at a level where you really can't move much at all, you can't get around, you know, walking is very difficult. You don't have much ability to get around on a wheelchair even. Just driving the loops are still very nice. There's, there's the lower loop and an upper loop. And just driving around the loops is amazing, uh, in my opinion. So that's, that's, that in and of itself is a great option. Yellowstone is a great driving park. And in fact, what I'm preparing right now is an audio guide to help you enjoy the park more. My opinion is that when people go to some of these places, most people don't really love history like I do, but they like it a lot more when they're at the place, when they're in a particular area and then you can talk about the background of that area. I think they tend to enjoy it a lot more. And so I'm preparing an audio guide to help you enjoy your trip to Yellowstone. It's not quite done yet, but by the time you watch this video, it might be 
So you can check our website. Again, I'll put that in the description. Uh, but our website is we'reintherockies.com. Anyway, this could be just a very nice option just to just drive around the, the loops, okay? If you stop at Old Faithful, they have... Old Faithful is a very flat area. You can park in the handicapped parking nearby and just... Um, it's just right there next to it, pretty much. Now, the whole Old Faithful area is much bigger, and there are many geyser areas to see and uh, geysers that are going off that you can see in that area. But Old Faithful itself is really close to the parking lot. And so I would recommend definitely seeing Old Faithful if you have limitations. The Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone uh, is something that you, you really have to see. If you are going to Yellowstone, you really need to try to get over to see the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. The most popular spot to see this from is Artist Point. You can park again at the handicapped parking lot there, or the, uh, there's handicapped parking spots there in the parking lot. There is a little bit of a walk down the path to get to Artist Point. So, you know, uh, try to do what you can. Again, you could go to the Canyon Visitor Center and get a wheelchair if you need to. There's a, an overlook there that is wheelchair accessible. Now, there's a, another little area where there's some steps that go up that, that you wouldn't be able to get to, but they're right next to each other. You can get an amazing view right from the wheelchair accessible spot. So really try to do that if you can. The City of Mammoth is a great place to go if you can't get around much at all. Because at the top, Mammoth, Mammoth has some terrace, uh, they're called Travertine Terraces. They're these, this is kind of a geyser area, hot spring area, and so you can see them from up above and from down below. And up above has a road that goes around that you can get a pretty good view with a little overlook that you can look down. And, uh, and then if you drive down to the bottom, you can park at the bottom and get a very good look at them from, from below. So that makes Mammoth a little unique where you can kind of park and see them from two different places, really right almost from your car. And then just the city of Mammoth itself has some picnic areas and some really cool places to hang out where you can just see the elk, look at the, the terrace, the travertine terraces and all that. Mammoth is a really cool place, so you, you could get a lot of enjoyment there without being able to get around too much. All right, also viewing wildlife. Uh, if you drive out through Lamar Valley or through Hayden Valley, both of these places, they don't really have parking lots, but they have pullouts. And most of the pullouts are big enough that you could maneuver a wheelchair if you needed to, or you could get out and, and um, take, take your chairs, take your camping chair or something like that, and just sit there and hang out and watch the wildlife. That would be a really good option for, for somebody who can't get around too much. Also, Fishing Bridge is right on the... Uh, edge of Yellowstone Lake so that's that's right where Yellowstone Lake turns into Yellowstone River and starts to flow up towards Hayden Valley and the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. Fishing Bridge you could really enjoy just in, uh, hanging out on the on the bridge and enjoying views of the lake. Nearby there is Mud Volcano. Of all the geyser areas that are accessible Mud Volcano is probably the best one. They actually have some uh, little geyser, mud geysers, mud, uh, what do they call mud pots that are right next to the parking lot. I mean, right next to them and some, some big ones, some really nice ones. And then the actual area where you would walk up around, maybe you can't get up around on the boardwalk, but you can just sit right there and enjoy a view of the area. The last time we were there, there was some buffalo hanging out there and you can see the steam vents, the fumaroles. Um, so that that would be a really nice one and it's right by Hayden Valley so you could team up both of those and it's right by Fishing Bridge so uh, all those great options and then also just a bunch of waterfalls on the side of the road um, that you can see as you drive through the park things like uh, waterfalls like Kepler Cascades Virginia Cascades Firehole Falls and Gibbon Falls these are all in the lower loop and they're just a pull out and walk out and see it doesn't require a hike or anything like that. So now, if you are with somebody who, uh, if you can do a little bit of walking, if you can get around a little bit, or if somebody can push you in a wheelchair, if you have a motorized wheelchair, then I'd say you can expand your options out a little bit more to 
like the Grand Prismatic Spring has a boardwalk that goes around there and Excelsior Geyser you would want to check that out Biscuit Basin has a little bit longer of a boardwalk that goes around some vents and, and a few cool little uh, springs Black Sand Basin also I think is a very beautiful area and it's very small you don't need to get around much at all there uh, there's a boardwalk that goes out to two different points there's a little cliff geyser that goes off a lot of times there's a river that flows through a beautiful area black sand basin and then west thumb is really popular hot spring area it's right on the edge of yellowstone lake by grant village and again there's a, a little bit of a hills on that one with the boardwalk so you'd probably need again either motorized or somebody to help you out um, but that's really popular and some beautiful deep blue springs right by the Yellowstone Lake there. And then I mentioned the Old Faithful area where you can get a loaner wheelchair if you need to. But Old Faithful, kind of close to the parking lot, you can see. But there's all these other areas there. So if you're able to, and they're very accessible. I mean, they're just a, a blacktop road that kind of goes out. Or uh, there's some boardwalks as well there too. And so if you have somebody, if you can get around on a wheelchair or something like that, definitely explore that area more than just Old Faithful. In our guides that we're putting together on our website, we're giving you instructions on how to do that, how to make the most of your trip, how to see the geysers that are going off. You can actually time it where you can see geysers that are going off besides just Old Faithful. So uh, check that out on our website too. Now, a couple of things not to do that I don't think are very good if you have difficulty getting around, if you have a wheelchair or something. Norris Geyser Basin, I love this area, but it's really not wheelchair friendly. The road, the, the little path leading to it is a, really broken up. And then once you get there, there's some real steep hills to get down into the basin. So I think that's probably something to avoid. Also, artist paint pots, really not uh, a wheelchair friendly one. There is kind of a gravelly road that goes out there. Uh, then there's some stairs that go up around. It's probably not. To get the most out of that, you want to get up on top. So I don't think that's a very good accessible area. And then obviously some of the backcountry hikes, some of the deeper hikes like Mystic Falls, um, Fairy, uh, Fire, Firehole Falls, even the overlook to Grand Prismatic Spring, probably not very accessible in my opinion. Certainly when you get over the Grand Canyon or the Yellowstone, there's some, some real deep, uh, steep hikes that go deep down into the canyon where you can get a look at the falls. Um, I, those are probably not, not accessible either. But for the most part, Yellowstone is a great area to enjoy, even, you know, no matter your level, no matter your age or your level, you can go and enjoy Yellowstone. So Please leave a comment on this video if you liked it. We really do enjoy hearing what is on your mind and what you're interested in and what you like and all that stuff. So please let us know what we can cover if you want us to cover something else. And then also please click that subscribe button if you got any value out of this video at all or if you're planning a trip to Yellowstone. All right, thanks for watching. Take care.